It's a conflict known for its epic land battles, when Union and Confederate armies clashed on U.S. soil. But the American Civil War was also fought on rivers and seas, and in the process, it changed the course of naval history. When the war began, the contrast between Union and Confederate maritime forces couldn't have been more stark. Half of the U.S. Navy's 90 ships were already primed and ready for action. Some were equipped with innovative long-range cannons and state-of-the-art steam engines. The Confederate Navy, on the other hand, had just 30 ships and not all were fit for battle. While Confederate leaders focused on adding to their fleet by building ironclad warships and buying vessels from Europe, U.S. naval leaders launched the Anaconda Plan, an ambitious operation to restrict access to the South's extensive coastline and rivers, including the mighty Mississippi. The resulting blockade hindered vital supplies from reaching Confederate ports and gave the Union Navy free reign to support land forces during numerous military campaigns. At the Battle of Shiloh in 1862, Union warships decimated Confederate ground forces and transported critical reinforcements across the Tennessee River. The Confederate Navy fought back, using commercial raiders like the CSS Alabama and CSS Shenandoah, which sank dozens of Union ships. And in Charleston Harbor, it even deployed a submarine, the H.L. Hunley, which successfully downed the massive USS Housatonic. But these were minor victories in a naval war that the South had little chance of winning. While the Confederacy built just a few dozen ships during the war, the Union churned out 600. Its superiority in terms of shipbuilding, fleet size, and technology proved key to the North's overall victory and laid the groundwork for future U.S. military campaigns and peacekeeping operations around the world. How can naval forces help a nation to project its power? 